What is going on guys, Lottery Stocks here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Now, if you've been keeping up with the channel, last week we saw a ton of unusual put options trade, but we also had something happen with the settlement where we thought we were gonna get a settlement and then the judge basically denied the motion to get the settlement. And now you're seeing sentiment switch in AMC. We just saw a 23% rip yesterday on Thursday. By the way, happy Good Friday, happy three day weekend. Hopefully you all are enjoying your weekend so far. But now you're seeing the sentiment switch not only in the price action up 20% on AMC, but the put options are changing. This time, put options are being sold, and this is the biggest block that we have ever seen so far. 940,000, at least over the past couple of weeks, put blocks sold on AMC with a strike price of $13 a share, expiring in 43 days. Now, if you were going to take a step back and look at this from a technical perspective, what does this mean? What would the contract mean in legal terms? This would mean that somebody is betting $940,000 against someone else that AMC will be over $13 within 43 trading days, above $13 a share within 43 trading days. This is at the price now. This is excluding reverse split. This is excluding conversion, settlement, so on and so forth. So this I wanted to bring to you first before we get into the video, but I honestly didn't even plan on making a video today. I saw some crazy numbers when I woke up on AMC and I touched on the chart on the shorter time frame for AMC GameStop and the SPY and I wanna cover it with you as well as some other stocks very slightly to close out the video. All I ask in return is for you guys to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. So according to Ortex, 25.09% short interest, utilization still maxed out, shares on loan reaching almost an all-time high at 200.29 million, and the cost to borrow average at 920%. Now we've seen the max this crazy, right? Over a thousand percent for a max. The max and the minimum we don't pay crazy attention to because one short seller can be borrowing at a thousand, one short seller can be borrowing at one percent, but the average being this high is absolutely crazy. 920%. This means if your position is a thousand, you're paying nine thousand to borrow shares, so on and so forth. So short sellers are paying nine times their position just to borrow shares. This is exactly what you would see if an entity is trapped in a play. According to Ape, 5.62% short interest, utilization 73%, cost of borrow average sitting right around 9%. Now Robinhood was just fined $10 million for basically what happened with the GameStop saga, which of course is not a big enough fine, especially seeing how much they got bailed out, right? Bailed out during the situation not only that but they got a bribe from Ken Griffin for basically 2.2 billion dollars and they're only getting fined 10.2 million which is just a slap on the wrist right if it all played out the way it should play out Robin Hood would not be an app right now it would not be a broker dealer so on and so forth they would not exist they would have went bankrupt they got bailed out and now they're getting a little slap on the wrist fine the reasons for these fines are negligent customer disclosure of inaccurate information including margin and risk associated with multi-leg option spreads basically technical failures is what they just got fined $10.2 million for. It's just not enough. We know that. All of retail knows that. The SEC knows that. But there are tons of conflicts of interest right now, uh, you know, showing that they are not getting fined enough. All this is for is to throw us a bone and say, look, we're doing our job. Look, we're doing our job. We find them. We knew that it happened. We saw that it happened and we took care of it. This is not taking care of it. But my main question, I just put a tweet out about it, is sure, even if they were fined enough, what happens to retail investors' money that got lost during what they did? This doesn't make sense. All of the time you see these fines on Goldman Sachs, you see them on Robinhood, but what happened to retail's money that got lost in this? Do we have to sue you guys? Do we have to sue regulators? Do we have to sue Robinhood ourselves? Moving on, Congress is investigating FINRA's U3 halt and naked short selling. We just saw all of these stuff exposed with FINRA on MMTLP, and finally Congress is investigating it. Will they just get slapped with another fine? Who knows, but at least they are investigating it. Again, that throw that bone tactic. Before we get into the charts, 200,000 shares available to borrow on AMC at a most recent fee of 390%, but before that it was at 778%. Look, I don't know, I have no idea how, when the markets closed, they dropped the fee more than half, or basically half, right? They dropped the fee half out of absolutely nowhere. Nobody knows, right? Within the matter of nine minutes, they dropped the fee from 800 to 390%. No idea. Calls to puts, losing on the option chain for this week. Puts won, sellers won. Uh, even though we got that 22% gain, we saw a 26% dip, you know, when the lawsuit got denied. So they're basically controlling the price so they make money out on the options chain. But what this tells me is that not only do we not know, but insiders don't know what the judge is going to do with the lawsuit and how it's going to affect retail. Now take a look at this. 1.7 million short exempt volume, 754,000 and 1.7 again. They stopped AMC from 
ripping hard. They stopped it hard from ripping. As for GameStop, 200,000 shares available to borrow. Most recent via 11.4% calls to puts lost on the options chain as well. A lot of people are bullish next week on GameStop, however, compared to being bearish, as well as expiration April 21st. We're going to touch on GameStop's chart in one second, but a lot of people are really, really bullish on GameStop going forward. Real quick, before we get into the charts, guys, get up to 17 free stocks. Just use my link. Sign up for Moomoo. Moo. It takes two minutes. And once you make a deposit, you're going to start earning free stock. But on top of that, if you're trading with a relatively smaller account, you're getting access to free level two order book data. So you can see where whales are loading up and dropping off shares, access to trading options with further expiration than Weeble, Robinhood, so on and so forth, and a ton of other benefits. So make sure to go do that. Also, guys, join the Discord. Don't sleep on the Discord. That link is under there as well. Moving on, touching on GameStop's chart, we closed at $22.40, up a percent and a half in after hours, hugging this support level right around $22.30. I thought we were going to get rejected there. We fought at it, broke above it, and now we're basing off it. This is a strong thing to see. If GameStop breaks out, I would be watching around $23 uh, for some resistance on GameStop or that next trend line. Now, whatever way you put this, right, flagging out or a falling channel, these are both bullish scenarios for GameStop on descending volume as well. GameStop looks bullish overall. I still hold puts in the short term, and the only reason I do that is because it just seems too good to be true. Plus, if you look at it on the daily chart, this cycle plays out every single time. It comes up and around, reaches a low, comes up, and it eventually trails back down to this new low. Not only that, but we have this disgusting gap, right? That is why I have this huge red line, this gap down to $18.32. This is exactly what I'm playing it for. If GameStop sells off, you can look for a bounce right around $21.50 to finish this ping pong before essentially selling off even further. That is what I'm looking at for GameStop. As for AMC, closed at $4.90, up 21% on the day on Thursday. Beautiful gap up, but again, gap up scary. We have a gap back down to $4.12. I do hold calls on AMC just for fun. I got them when it ripped back here and I still hold them just for fun, but I still stick to AMC finding a new low or relative low, I'm sorry, by April 12th. And this is exactly what you're seeing, right? This ping pong back and forth. I want you to pay attention to when AMC gets flushed. We had a flush right here and a flush right here. This is exactly what they love to do with the stock. These flushes are are just bringing it to lower lows and lower highs. This is a descending channel. They're bringing it down while manipulating you to purchase calls. And I think it's a potential trap. Yes, AMC could base right here and it could rip. I would watch for a rejection right around $5.20. If we break above that, I'd watch $5.70 right out of that supply zone that we see above there. But overall, I don't think we're breaking out of this channel just yet. I think we're going to scale back down all the way up to about April 11th, April 12th and reach this low right around $3.80 cents if not slightly lower and that is exactly where i'm loading up on calls i could be completely wrong i'm not a financial advisor i don't give financial advice but i want to touch on xrp overlaid with amc amc xrp we all know the correlation and if you don't i will make a video about it somebody in discord wanted me to make a video about it i've just been very very busy but take a look at xrp and amc a lot of people think they have theories that money siphoned in and out major dump in xrp major rip in amc Major dump in XRP, major rip in AMC, major rip in XRP, major dump in AMC, and then a rip right after, right? This is nothing new, absolutely nothing new. Dump in AMC, rip in XRP, AMC followed, so on and so forth. However, this is exactly what you're seeing right now. AMC is selling off. XRP is having a rip. What does that mean going forward? More likely AMC is going to have a rip very, very soon, but not immediately. This is exactly why I think next week, April 12th, April 11th, 12th, loading up on calls is a decent thing to see, decent thing to do, in my opinion, personal advice for me, not for you. That's exactly what I'm going to do on top of those put options being sold that we see above that $13 strike price. So essentially bullish thing to see. If you guys haven't seen what happened with BlackRock, I posted a video yesterday on it and i'm going to touch a tiny bit on it at the end of this video but the s p 500 closed at 409 dollars 19 cents of 0.3 percent after hours i wanted to point out one thing on the spy this is a dangerous thing to trade and the only reason i say that is because the economy is not looking strong but it's basically fooling you with the overall chart and this is just my outlook i think this is a trap even though it looks good look at the volume these this is exactly where buyers and sellers are matched buyers and sellers are are matched up here and it, then it comes down to one one simple thing when buyers and sellers are matched what is the more common sense logical thought right here is the economy strong can we climb for another 10 years 
in the S&P 500 in the overall market? And my answer to you is absolutely not. And this is just my outlook. I think the SPY comes down, retraces back down to about 404, retest this little level right here before essentially either breaking lower, retesting 398 or breaking higher. But if we break higher, we need to break over 420. That's it. If we break over 420, I'll change my sentiment on the SPY and I'll stick to that. Before I forget, based on this Robinhood settlement, I am going to be grabbing puts probably market open on Monday on Robinhood. Uh, I have to take a better look at the chart, but honestly, safely betting puts on Robinhood a few months out seems to always work for me. So I will probably be doing that. If you want my trades right away, I, I drop them in Discord. Now, real quick, before we close out the video, Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond, dead. It, it, it looks dead. A lot of people are pissed off. It's bankrupt company, basically, uh, but it's not a fundamental play. It's a short squeeze play. And we are coming up right around this level where Bed Bath & Beyond has potential to bounce. It has potential to go lower and get switched to the over-the-counter market. The last times, Bed Bath & Beyond outsold this trend line. It only outsold 10%, 27, 57. So it could sell even further, but we don't even have that potential. Bed Bath & Beyond is trading at 30 cents. There's not much lower this thing can go before it actually goes to zero. I think Bed Bath & Beyond is getting a bounce right around 15 cents to 12 cents. I think Bed Bath & Beyond is getting a bounce right around there and I'm gonna let it sell off a little bit further. However, if GameStop AMC runs very, very soon, I think Bed Bath & Beyond is going to have a sympathy pop as well. Now, the numbers for this are crazy. 1.3 million shares available to borrow. The options chain, for some reason, is wiped, but only on the call side, right? So some fuckery is happening on the weekend. Only on the call side, right? Uh, and then out of the money on the put side. Now, if you look at the short exempts, this is this is disgusting. 1.9 million, 3.4, 2.7, 2.4, 1.5, 7.3 million short exempts. I mean, this is disgusting. They're pumping this thing into the floor. This shows me that they are trying to race as fast as they can to get this to zero for some reason. They really, really don't want Bed Bath & Beyond to rip one more time. I think it will cause something very, very bad for them. But you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments on this down below. And we have some fun earnings coming up this week. BlackRock is burning right now. Even if their earnings do good, I don't know. They have earnings on Friday. We're going to talk more about that in Discord, as well as City, Wells Fargo, and some other banks as well. And some more important earnings that we will make some DGEN bets on in Discord. So if you guys want to join that, link under the video. Also get your free stocks. I love you all. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Lottery stocks out.